Think artificial sweeteners are better than regular sugar? Think again. Many studies show that artificial sweeteners can be just as bad, if not worse, than regular sugar. In this video, I'll share with you why you might want to rethink using artificial sweeteners and the harmful effects that they have on your body. Maybe you've been told that artificial sweeteners are better than regular sugar and that you can have that sweet escape without the guilt, right? Wrong. Let's uncover the bitter truth about these sugary imposters. So food companies love to slap those zero calorie labels on products because they know that if they do that, they'll just fly off the shelves. We're surrounded by diet drinks and low-cal treats, thinking that they're going to promise us health and happiness when the truth is far from sweet. Okay, look, since the 1980s, artificial sweetener consumption has skyrocketed along with obesity rates. Coincidence? I think not. It really is a very disturbing trend. While regular sugar gets most of the blame, there's growing evidence that shows that artificial sweeteners might be just as bad, if not worse, than regular sugar. Let's break down three reasons why artificial sweeteners are public enemy number one for your brain and for your waistline. Studies show a link between artificial sweeteners and conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and weight gain. In some studies, rats fed artificial sweeteners gained even more weight than when they ate regular sugar. Brain and metabolism, look. When you consume artificial sweeteners, it completely confuses your brain. The sweeteners trick your brain into thinking that you're consuming regular sugar and then an insulin spike follows, which slows down your metabolism. As a result, you end up hungrier, craving more sugar and storing more belly fat. Plus, artificial sweeteners have been linked to increased appetite and overeating. They're seriously addictive. Artificial sweeteners can be more addictive than cocaine, according to one study. Diet soda is a prime culprit, but it's crucial to break that habit for your health. In one study, they found that artificial sweeteners increased hunger, slowed metabolism, and increased body fat by 14% while increasing food consumption in just two weeks. Diet soda is often seen as a healthier alternative, but that myth is dangerous. Studies show that diet soda drinkers are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than those who drink regular soda. I know it's mind boggling, but it's true. In a 14 year study with over 60,000 women, researchers discovered some pretty alarming facts that might make you think twice about consuming diet drinks and diet products. They found that women who drank one 12 ounce diet soda a week had a 33% increased risk of developing diabetes. And women who drank one 20 ounce diet soda drink a week had a 66% increase of developing type two diabetes. In another study, they found that postmenopausal women who drank two or more diet sodas a day had an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. The bottom line is that our bodies aren't designed for artificial sweeteners. They mess with our metabolism, our hormones, um, our cravings, and our overall health. So which artificial sweeteners are the worst offenders? Here are five that you absolutely want to avoid. Aspartame. Aspartame is a widely used artificial sweetener that's used in a lot of different products. Despite being approved for decades, recent studies have linked it to serious health problems. Animal research has shown that it can contribute to cancer and brain damage. Sucralose. Originally developed as an insecticide, sucralose is a highly processed artificial sweetener. Your body struggles to process sucralose, which raises concerns about the long-term effects. Acesulfame K. Often combined with other artificial sweeteners, this one is also found in a lot of processed foods and drinks. Its main component, methylene chloride, has been associated with a range of health issues, including nausea, mood problems, and liver and kidney damage. This is because your body can't break it down properly. Saccharin. This is a controversial sweetener that was once linked to bladder cancer. While this link is less clear now, it's still associated with other conditions like digestive upset and potential cancer risk. Saccharin is commonly used in children's medications, raising concerns about its impact on young people. Xylitol. Xylitol and other sugar alcohols are often marketed as better for you, healthy alternatives to sugar but they can cause digestive issues like gas, bloating, and even diarrhea. 
They're also very poorly absorbed by your body. More recent studies have linked xylitol with cardiovascular events like heart disease and stroke. Then there's erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that's found naturally in some foods, but it's also used as an artificial sweetener. A new study from the Cleveland Clinic found that this is often blended with stevia and was linked to an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and other cardiovascular events. Sugar alcohols are similar to sugar. They're both carbohydrates and they have similar structures, but sugar alcohols often contain an alcohol molecule and aren't processed in your body in the same way. It's important to note that the research on artificial sweeteners, it can be a bit complex and it's changing and growing every single day. While these artificial sweeteners are generally considered safe in small amounts, there's still growing concerns about the long-term effects on your health. So what's the answer? Let's be clear, sugar isn't a saint either. We consume way too much of it, but artificial sweeteners, they aren't any better. Here's what you can do. Enjoy sugar in moderation like a treat. Treat it like, I don't know, a shot of tequila or like a glass of wine, something that you have more in moderation. Adding a small amount of sugar to your coffee can be manageable, again, as long as you don't go overboard. Now, some of you who might be following me for a while, you might have heard my story about how I started to cut back on sugar. The very first place that I started actually was in my coffee. Now, I don't know about you, but I would much rather eat my sugar rather than drinking it. But here's the thing, that habit that I had of just putting sugar into my coffee every single day, it was on autopilot. I wasn't even thinking about it anymore and I was dumping five packs of sugar into my coffee every single day. And this is why I am such an advocate for helping people to understand the importance of having awareness of your current habits. Here's a tip. One thing I did to start cutting back on sugar in my coffee was adding in just a little bit of cinnamon. The thing is that cinnamon has a naturally sweet taste and it also helps with blood sugar regulation as well. But again, when it comes to sugar, it's all about moderation, and balance. Be aware of hidden sugars in packaged foods. You wouldn't believe how much sugar is lurking in processed foods. Sugar is lurking in foods that you wouldn't even suspect. Enjoy the natural sweetness of fruits and whole foods. Look, over time your palate will adjust, even if it doesn't feel this way at first. Again, when I was losing 30 pounds, one of the things I struggled with the most was cookies. I was eating like multiple cookies every single day and I didn't see if there was ever a way that I could actually cut back on eating those cookies, but I did. And guess what? When I started to cut back on those cookies and then I started to eat something sweet afterwards, I noticed that my palate had actually adjusted and things that I didn't recognize as being too sweet before were actually now way too sweet for me. So again, even though it doesn't feel like it right now, that like your palate will ever change, trust me, it will. Next, if you have a craving for something sweet, have real sugar instead of fake foods. So what do I mean by this? Focus on foods with a low glycemic index. Low glycemic index foods are foods that don't spike your blood sugar as much. Also focus on getting plenty of nutrients and enjoying treats with real sugar. I actually have a few on my channel that you might want to check out. I think my favorite has to be my chocolate chip cookies, which I make with a secret ingredient that may actually help to suppress your appetite. So make sure to check that one out. Consuming real sugars is a better alternative than messing around with artificial sweeteners, which actually do mess around with your metabolism as well as your weight. When craving something sweet, here are some natural sweeteners that you can consider. Coconut palm sugar. This is probably my favorite one that I use in my kitchen all the time. Maple syrup, raw honey, stevia. These are all great healthier substitutions. And I wanna preface this by saying there's no such thing as healthy sugar, but these alternatives are going to be way better than artificial sweeteners. Again, enjoy in moderation. Lastly, avoid artificial sweeteners like the plague. Stevia might be a slightly better option, but again, with all these alternative sources of sugar that I mentioned, like coconut palm sugar, raw honey, use them in moderation. If you're ready to break free from sugar cravings and wanna learn how to identify hidden sources of sugar, make sure to check out my program, Sugar Secrets. You'll learn how to identify hidden sources of sugar in your food, better sugar alternatives, and how to reset your taste buds so that you can finally release the grip that sugar has over you. Your body deserves better. 
Let's ditch the artificial sweeteners and opt for real whole foods. Your body will thank you.